Satish, good to have you with us. When you take a look at aluminum demand, it was pretty strong in the first half. What assumptions are you making for the coming quarters? I, I think that, you know, from a, a demand perspective, if you look at aluminum, there, the demand is extremely strong. I think that, you know, whether you take the beverage can or the packaging market, the auto driven by electric vehicles, aerospace driven by, you know, everybody's traveling, uh, the only sector that is sort of going flattish for us is building and construction, which is obviously because, you know, of the interest rates, that activity has slowed down. But four, out of the four sectors, three are uh, quite strong, the demand. And I just wanted to add, the Indian demand is amazing. I mean, it's growing at 10 percent. So very strong uh, aluminum and copper demand in India. Does the upcoming election add to that growth? Well, it's true that during the election time, a lot more infrastructure spend happens, which is generally uh, very good for uh, metals. So, yes, it helps. Can you quantify that, please, Satish? No, but, I mean, the, the run-up, the election is sort of middle of next year. And right now, quarter on qu year on year, every quarter, the aluminium demand is up in double digits. So, you know, 10% growth. Normally in India, uh, COVID times and a little bit before, it was about 7% CAGR. Today, the growth is 10% going on every quarter. So we are already seeing in India a very strong demand. Satish, you know, we've seen uh, copper prices about 15, 16% down since mid of January right now. You know, how does that affect your business? And, you know, looking at aluminium uh, ahead here, you know, what do you see in terms of price? And I want to just get to copper because copper must surely, you know, have a big, big role to play looking ahead with the demand really perhaps going up exponentially, being so important in EVs and other modern industries. So we have, that's the real uh, paradox in some ways. Both aluminium and copper, we are in a situation where supply demand is tight, forward-looking demand every quarter looks good. But the commodity prices of both aluminium and copper are quite subdued and very range-bound. And I think that's happening. And as you were talking on your own show, Chinese economy and what's going to happen with U.S. interest rates, these two uh, you know, depending on what comes out in the news, the prices of aluminium and copper go up and down in a very volatile sense. So it's very strange that the uh, macroeconomic sentiments are sort of having a dampening effect on what is actually a very buoyant demand market for both aluminium and copper. So I think you guys are the sole and major producer of copper in India. Now, Adani is planning to start production of its new plant next year. How do you see this whole industry and the structure of it evolving uh, with new capacity coming on? And, you know, copper, of course, I would say it's so important for the world's energy transition. Yeah, and I think, you know, you have to remember that the, uh, one of our smelters of Vedanta actually had to shut down. So uh, we are actually short on copper cathodes, which are now being imported in from many other parts of the world. So I think that, you know, having another smelter coming in is good for the Indian economy. But where we are focused is going up the chain from cathodes to wires to rods to uh, inner group tubes. So our strategy is at the same time you put money into upstream, we are heavily investing into value added downstream in copper as well. Satish, you have a strong balance sheet. You're looking to grow organically. What's the plan specifically? So if you look at our CapEx plans, they're pretty aggressive. I mean, Novellis, we have a, a, a 2.7 billion greenfield plant that is, you know, sort of 30% through in uh, Alabama. In India, we have just announced a 2 million ton upstream alumina refinery. So, you know, we have committed nearly four to five billion that we are going to spend over the coming two to three years. So quite strong uh, organic growth plans that way. Any key projects within India itself? So within India, the, the, the one that we recently announced was a two million uh, greenfield alumina refinery in Odisha. And the second thing is we are going to announce a big uh, extrusion press to meet the demand of the Indian railways for aluminium coaches. So that's, those are the two big ones I would pick. 
Satish, what are you thinking about uh, doing other metals, getting into other uh, uh, commodities here uh, uh, as well, just to expand your portfolio? Do you want to essentially be a, a, a dual play or mainly a dual play? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, the part that we are going to be uh, working on is what we call the associated metals that come in the concentrates. So I, I'm going to run through a number of them. So from the uh, bauxite residue, we are working on gallium and vanadium. From the copper concentrate, besides gold, silver, we are going to try to take out rare earths. So the concentrate chain, which had quite a lot of these, what I will call critical minerals, is where Hindalco is going to be investing in. So, Satish, how would you do this? Would it be through something organic that you started yourself? Or, you know, obviously, with your balance sheet, it probably makes sense for you to be buying other players. Are you going to get into the M&A uh, side of things? No, actually, you know, in this type of rare earths and things like that, there's not too many people that you can buy. The technologies are sort of just coming out. So we are working with some of the expert companies that are in this field to set up new facilities. I mean, we just announced a large uh, copper recycling. And the copper recycling is actually dealing with e-waste and other types of copper scrap, which besides copper gives you a lot of these other uh, interesting critical minerals. So that's the way we're going to do it.